If you don't know what that song is, it's Ironic by Alanis Morissette. It was popular, I don't know, like 20 some odd years ago um, when I was a teenager. <laughs> so, no, that would be more than 20 years ago. No, it would be 20 years ago. Anyway, Stacy here with Limelight AZ. I played that song um, because... You know, I'm, I was thinking today about the irony of having Lyme disease. There's so many, uh, for me specifically, so many things about having Lyme disease is ironic. Um, you know, I had danced around the idea of becoming a midwife for a good decade. Good decade. Uh, let's see. Yep. My son was 10 when I was diagnosed with Lyme disease. And I had fallen in love with midwifery because I had him with a midwife. So just, just short of a decade, I guess. Um, and I had played with the idea of, of becoming a midwife, but <clears throat> really didn't like the idea of that much responsibility. I literally have the lives of a mother and a baby in my hands. Um, <clears throat> and I didn't know that I would be capable of handling that responsibility. So I really danced around the idea for a long time. I ended up becoming a uh, childbirth instructor with the Bradley Method. Um, loved it for the time being. Played again with the idea of becoming a midwife. Just it didn't pan out at that time and I didn't really have the wherewithal to push through for the effort that it would take to become a midwife. And I think a lot of that was because in the back of my head, I was terrified, again, having the responsibility of lives in your hands and a baby at that. I mean, the mother, although obviously that's an important thing, there's something about lo losing a baby that is just so devastating and um, that hits you in a, in a level that is unlike any other death. So... Um, so I think because that was in the back of my head all the time, I just, I didn't have the, the push through to continue on and become a midwife. Um, tried to become a photographer, uh, which I actually did successfully for a little while. Um, but then for personal reasons, shut my doors. Um, and then decided, you know what? This is God telling me it's time to go into midwifery finally. So, like, I, I literally danced around this for, like, a decade. Um, I had been in school um, for a year. Okay, so I had been in school for a year um, waiting for the program to open, which was going to become available to me. Oh. Speaking of ironic, am I going to be able to get through this video? Um, okay, so I was in school for a year getting some of the, the core stuff done, um, for, like English and math and stuff like that, um, because the program had a year-long waiting list. Uh, the program became available to me January 2017, so January this year. And I was in school for a full year, um, waiting for, for this program to start up. And then, um, January hits and guess what? Lime hits. And so, uh, the irony there after dancing around with the idea of becoming a midwife for so long and then, um, waiting a year for the program to begin so that I could join it, um, and then not be able to do it. It was just, it's ironic. Um, another thing is that I had decided I really, really wanted to take the health of my family seriously and really um, anchor down and have a healthy eating lifestyle for a family. And I had bought uh, a month prior to diagnosis. I was diagnosed in uh, March 
and didn't know that I had Lyme yet. I still thought what I was dealing with was temporary um, and that I would recover from it quickly. Um, and with our income tax money that year, we bought a bunch of stuff to make eating healthy easier. So we bought a, uh, a really nice blender. We bought a juicer. We bought um, a spiralizer, you know, things that are known to make healthy eating easier. And I had started um, on the essential oil route to try to boost immunity for our family. And turns out, I can't use any of it because I am stuck in bed. <laughs> so that's ironic. Um, I thought that I would never move back to Arizona. And within a couple months um, of Lyme beginning, we're back in Arizona. Um, I went through my first summer back in Arizona in almost five years. And, and craved actually having the hot, hot heat and sun on my skin during the summer couldn't do it because i'm stuck in bed i never noticed the summer <laughs> so that's pretty ironic um it's just it seems like it and lyme disease this thing that comes along with pets and walking through forests neither of which i mean at least in recent years i haven't had too many pets um and never did a lot of camping and then there's these people that go camping like every weekend and have multiple pets and they just, they don't get Lyme disease, but here I am, I have Lyme disease. And so the irony there, not that I would wish it upon anybody else, I just, it just, you know, I'm a person who likes to look at percentages and know like there's a 50% chance of this happening to you, is it worth it, you know? Um, and it just it doesn't make sense why why I got this. I am not a person who would be regularly. I was a city girl, and wasn't regularly exposed to um, the possibility of a Lyme carrying a Lyme co infections carrying tick. Um, so it's just ironic. Um, this whole thing is just, the irony of everything is just surreal. And, like, I, who knew that I'd be under 40 and bedridden and not know when or if I'm ever going to get out of this bed. I'm determined to get out of the bed, but I don't honestly know how long it's going to take. And, uh, the bee venom, I think, has definitely stopped the progression of the Lyme disease and the co-infections, but it sure is slow. So I don't know if it's going to work quickly or it's going to be another year before it works, you know. And also, you know, one of the interesting things that I, I've gone over in my head several times um, we had moved to a new place about this time last year. Um, and come to find out there was a family down the street whose mom had cancer. And um, it just, I don't know, she had, I mean, she had three, four kids living at home with her, sometimes five, and uh, with her and her husband. And it just struck me. The youngest was five and I just, the family just, it just hit me in my core. Like, oh my gosh, you know, she's got a child who's five and she's got cancer, a very serious form of cancer that is extremely life threatening. Um, and she's battling it, uh, like crazy trying to make sure it doesn't it doesn't take her life, you know, and I had talked to several of my friends and asked them to keep her in prayer. And, um, I don't know, it, you know, when they asked how I was doing, because we were also going through a rough time at the time, I'm like, you know what? Life sucks for us right now, but I could be a mom with five kids and have cancer that's threatening my life. And little did I know that within just a couple months, I would 
be dealing with a disease that is not only not recognized but not paid for by insurance and is a self-research self do-it-yourself healing from it that is apparently got no cure and will take your life extraordinarily slowly um, and painfully and will keep you in pain and that there would be people that have dealt with cancer and this disease and have said that they would take the cancer hands down every time and I just I mean I've never had cancer and I'm thankful that I haven't and Obviously, I never want to deal with that. Um, but to know that there's people that would rather have the cancer than what I'm dealing with kind of puts things in perspective for me. And it's like, so the irony, you know, I just, after having my, my youngest, you know, I swore that there would be, that I would not cut her off from nursing until she was ready. I did that with my the one before her who I cut off at two and a half years and she got sick instantly after. Well, it turns out she has celiac disease and um, it would have been better for her to continue nursing. So I said I, would not, I wouldn't do that. And then I had to stop nursing her at eight months. It's like the irony of these things is just like, this is what I want. This is what you get. The polar opposite, you know, and... <sighs> It feels a lot like trying to climb out of a box that is slowly closing in on you. You know, and you you just keep clawing at the edges but don't really go anywhere because you don't have traction. I don't know. The whole thing is just ironic. And so I really, I felt the need of posting the irony. I don't know how many other people are deal with the irony of it, you know. And then, and then to have the feeling of losing friends and family um or at least having the dynamics of your relationships changing in every relationship every single relationship it the dynamics have changed the irony of having my mom cleaning up after me at 40 years old you know i'm not in diapers anymore i haven't been in diapers in 36 years you know and so now we're back to her having to take care of me in that in that way and it's just everything is so so ironic and I'm ready to be out of the irony of it all you know I'm ready to to move on and and have my life back or at least a, a life that looks a lot different than what I'm dealing with now I don't think that I'll ever be able to get back to normal um or how I recognize life before. How can you after experiencing something like this? But, you know, what can you do? Anyways, so there's my The Irony of It All video. Have a good day.